Hey, well, welcome back. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll, I'll put links to um, your website and your Patreon down in the uh, description box after the interview so people can find where to uh, find you and support you on Patreon. Lovely. Thank you. And so, yes, welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. A bit technical difficulty there. So uh, for those of you who just joined us, this is Emily Hare. Uh, did you say hair or is it? Hare? Yeah, yeah, just like the, the, like the rabbit. Well, it's not a rabbit, but yeah, like the animal. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, illustrator and fantasy artist based in Nottingham, UK. Thank you so much for joining me. We had a bit of tef technical difficulties there, a bit of feedback. But um, yeah, so how's your week going at the moment? What do you have planned? Uh, this week I am working with um, someone I've worked with before, uh, Rich Galland, who um, I did illustrations for um, a card game called Jane Austen's Matchmaker. Oh. Um, and it was based around basically getting married <laughs> in the Jane Austen's world. So you've got um, uh, the, the girls have to be paired up with the boys, but the, the, this time around he's changed, he's updated the game. Um, it's now got a dice or a die. Do you say dice or die? Um, so I'm doing an expansion pack for that. So it's kind of adding to the previous game and changing it slightly. Um, so it's a bit more. Uh, it's not so much the, the guys trying to marry marry the girls. It's going to be a bit more, a um, little bit more modern uh, touch to it, and some other characters and other other elements into the game, which will make it a bit more more. Um, slightly more complex but apparently it's not a it's not a you don't need to be good at maths to play it which is good for me because i i'm really bad at maths <laughs> i kind of uh, yeah avoid numbers yeah me too terrible yeah. terrible at maths uh, maybe it's just something about the artistic brain yeah yes uh, well except well yeah my partner's pretty good at maths hmm. he's got brain too but yeah I think I'm a bit dyslexic with maths I've always struggled but um but yeah so I'm doing those cards this week and next week but um in two weeks time I've got um I'm part of an exhibition in Glastonbury oh nice Somerset, um which I was invited to to be a part of I think there's six of us all together um it's called the exhibition of mythic arts and crafts and oh nice it is date should know this off by heart but I'm just doing a double check it's the first weekend in October, which is the first and second of October. So Ooh. if anyone is listening who's in Somerset or near Somerset and wants to come along, there's going to be loads of um, fancy art for sale and prints and chatting with artists and all that kind of thing. So oh, nice. I've got, a lot of, sorry. Oh, oh, I've got a lot of painting to do before, before I kind of... Uh, yeah. I've got lots of paintings to take, but I need to. I want to. I want to bring some more more stuff as well. So, I'm be very very busy. Yes, yes. How do you How do you usually plan for a gallery showing? Do you go these are the bits I already have, and then I'm going to add ten more? Or? Well, this uh, it's not a gallery. It's, it's at the assembly rooms in um, in Glastonbury, hmm. and the people that organise it. They've, I think this is the third year. It's either third or fourth year. Um, they might correct me, but. And by the way, the website is emacart, E-M-A-C-A-R-T dot co dot UK for more details of, of all the other artists. Um, and they basically hire out the hall and put up a show each year because um, they, they've felt that there isn't really much, um, there aren't any conventions which are exclusively about fantasy art um, in the UK. You know, you've got the, the comic conventions, which I've done, in, uh, previously and you've got London MCM um, but they're mostly comic and, and memorabilia and really really sort of mainstream you know movie stuff and it, it's it's all people generally going there to see things they know so yeah. if what you're doing isn't um, Marvel or DC or um, Game of Thrones or something like that they often don't know how to you know they, they don't know what they're looking at so they don't they don't have any interest in it yeah uh, a small percentage of the people that come to those do but so mm -hmm. Alexandra who um Alexandra Dorr who's also um, one of the artists showing she's organized it with a couple of the other artists I think Chris <gasps> don't Chris down I might be saying the names wrong um 
but there's two or three of them that have been organising it and they wanted to provide a platform for fantasy artists in the UK to show their work. Oh, and like Dragon Con UK kind of thing. Or yeah. Lexicon UK. <laughs> yeah. Time, that would be uh, it, could, it, it could turn into that, but at the moment it's, it's, you know, it's just six six of us, I think. Let me just double, double check that oh, once. Uh, I'm going to have to pop down and see you guys. That sounds so exciting. Yes, it be good. And there's a, a witch's market oh, nice. as well that weekend. So. There's Laura Dalligan show, showing as well. I don't know. She's, the, uh, she's based in Glastonbury, I think. Oh, she, okay. She, she's like a, um, she draws a, uh, draws a lot on drums. She paints lots of totem drums for people. Oh, okay. It's, it's, I can tell you the artist right now, so I'm not leaving anyone out. Uh, Alexandra Dorr, Katrina C. Sesum, Lucy Pendrick, Tamara Newman and Chris Down and myself. Oh. So, um, I think I have a feeling Tamara might not be able to make it now, but there's basically six of us. So it's oh. yeah, gonna be small, um, cozy, and and hopefully, hopefully busy. So um, you said you've you've been shown at Comic Con as well. Is yeah. There, is there a difference between like doing a show where you're one of the main artists and showing like at a Comic Con where you're like just a table? Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I've done, um, I, I used to show in the sort of comic village area of comic conventions. So I've done uh, uh, London MCM, I think it was London MCM I did once. I don't generally do the MCM shows because I, my work doesn't seem to get any foothold in there. Mm. So um, I, I stuck to London Film and Comic Con, which is a different, um, slightly different show. And there was the London Super Comic Con as well so many similar but different names um and the comic the more comic based ones um and also like um nice as well that happens in bedfordshire that they they generally have guests that people are coming to see art and they want to buy comic art i mean i don't do comics i have done bits and bobs for comics but i'm not um, a sequential artist so hmm. any covers and things but they come along and they're def very definitely wanting to sit to buy art. Whereas the MCMs and the more sort of uh, comic-y or sort of mainstream, I should, shouldn't say comic -y, the more mainstream and sort of media, um, you know, TV shows and signing, you know, lots of people signing their autographs, you know, people from um, movies from 40 years ago. But, uh, Babylon 5 and yeah, <laughs> Star Trek exactly. and... And people will spend hundreds of pounds on uh, signatures, but those shows are generally not as interested in coming in and looking at art because that, that's not what the show's about, really. Mm. Uh, so I, for me, anyway, for, for, for what I was taking, it wasn't working out for me. But, I mean, I know plenty of artists who it does work really well for. My partner, Matt, Matt Dixon, mm. he does a lot of work for Blizzard, um, the Hearthstone game. So he takes a lot of that stuff along and obviously people recognize that but also his own work is very very eye, you know it's very bright and colorful and eye-catching and he has people that have been coming to him for years at those, those conventions so they tend to come back to see what new stuff he brings so yeah, yeah. Somebody, i think it depends what you have and, and how it fits into the the big noisy colorful i mean it's just uh, it's it's a you know thousands of people at those events so yeah yeah it's, hard to be, it's like hi yeah, I think if you've done work for an IP that people recognise, like Magic or like Warcraft or something like that, and then they go, "Oh, you've done work for this IP, therefore I'm more interested in yeah, seeing what you've done as well." Yeah, and they, they'll they'll most likely know. You know, they might have played your card or, or something like that. So it, it's it's easier if you if you work for a recognised um, sort of company, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but I haven't so. I was like floating long, around. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been doing this, like professionally? When did you quit um, your day job? As it uh, were? Uh, I, I quit doing sort of part time. I used to do so I just photo retouching for a while. I stopped doing that in uh, 2012. Hmm. But I've been working sort of part time, I suppose, as, as an illustrator since uh, 2005, 2006. Right, so you've been doing but, it for like about a decade now. I have, but I haven't really. Pre pre two thousand and twelve, I was doing lots of other things to try and sort of keep it going as well. So um, I've been lucky that since two thousand and twelve, I've been able to just um, do be freelance. 
Um, but now I'm, I'm trying to take it in a slightly different path by starting with my, with my Patreon page um, mm. to try and become self-sufficient so I don't have to rely on clients eventually. Um, yeah. Or at least um, if I do do client, do client work, it'll be um, more, I can pick and choose more um, than what I do currently. And I'm also moving away from digital painting, which I've been doing mostly for the last 10 years. So, um, and I never used to do that before I started digital. I was, I was doing pet portraits and uh, local exhibitions in Somerset when I lived down there. Mm. Uh, and I kind of, part of me now is like, oh, I wish I hadn't started doing the digital and I wish I'd stuck to the traditional because I, lo I love it and I haven't stopped, but I've, yeah. You know, I've, my, the majority of my work was um, in the last 10 years has been digital and since I started Patreon in February um, the response to my, my, my traditional work that, that's been basically personal work yeah. uh, has been completely different I mean I don't get that kind of response from my my digital work even if I really even really enjoyed I remember posting things to, oh I've really enjoyed drawing this uh, painting this picture and I hope people like it you know on Facebook and, and then there's, there's either nothing or not particular response. And you're thinking, well, what, what am I not doing right? Because I really enjoyed doing it. But yeah, since yeah. doing the traditional, it's completely different. So uh, there's obviously something that happens with me and real paint that, that, that works. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've, mm -hmm. I'm on that path now. And uh, hopefully by this time next year, I'll, I'll be fully sort of, have, have, yeah, I, I'll still do digital work, but um, it'll be kind of special special jobs only maybe um and mostly editing of my own you know traditional stuff and on, on there yeah. yeah i mean i find i find the same thing when i do digital work and traditional work if i do a traditional piece people respond a lot better yeah i don't know why <laughs> no i mean i it's frustrating because there's just as much um time and effort i mean sometimes actually traditional does take longer obviously because you've got to wait for paint to dry um, or you've got to you know, plan it out in a different way because obviously with digital you can edit it a lot more easily and you don't have to plan a picture in the same way. Like you should, of course, but um, you can be a lot more, you can cut a lot more corners. But, mm. uh, and I think a lot of people, I mean, I've spent years people going, oh, is this, is this um, what, what medium have you painted this in? And you say, oh, digital. And they're like, oh. So, you know, they, they immediately... Oh, you pressed the press generate the button. art button, did you? Yeah. But it's really difficult for someone who hasn't seen a, a tablet or hasn't seen someone working digitally. I mean, yeah. you can understand why. And also because you can cheat, you know, as much as you want um, with digital, or much easier. You can cover up a multitude of sins that way compared to um, splatting paint around, especially watercolour, which I'm, I'm doing, which is very, very un unforgiving. So, uh, but I like it. Yeah, people say watercolour is unforgiving, but I've always found it like one of the most forgiving things. Oh, yeah. I yeah. don't know, maybe it's just me. Oh, well, I only mean that because you can't paint, you basically can't paint over it. You know, if you make, yeah. like, like, like with oil paints, you can, or acrylic, you can paint over if you've bodged up a line, whereas with watercolour, if you're wanting to leave a lovely white area, yeah, you're not using masking tape. If you accidentally drip a piece of paint, as you go over, you know, it, it's it's much more. Um, You've got to Bob Ross it then, don't you? Yes, <laughs> I meant to do that. Happy accidents. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those are the nice bits. The happy accidents, are the best bits, because then you, it's almost impossible to do that with digital, even if you're wildly scribbling with a, a really mm. random um, brush. It's just not the same. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it's it's just. Um, I mean, I've loved loved doing digital, but. I realise now that um, my my heart really is with the, with the messy stuff. Is watercolour your main medium or do you do oils and acrylics as well? Uh, watercolour is my main medium at the moment, merely because of where I, I'm living, um, moving soon, but I'm currently in the kitchen, diner and office. So I basically live and work in here, so there's no way I can do oils. Mm. Uh, there's nowhere to leave them. Um, to dry. Do you have kids or cats or? No, no kids or cats, but um, it's, there's just not enough space. It's a tiny, tiny space and we, we there's a sofa behind me um, and Matt's desk is right next to me. Kitchen's this side, 
So yeah. It, so if it, you want any space to eat, you've got to kind of leave the <laughs> leave the countertop yeah. clean of things. Yeah. So it's mm. it, it. When I move, I'm going to be able to get back to oil painting because acrylics and me don't don't get on very well because it's it's again for me uh, quite unforgiving in that it dries so fast and I like I love smooth blends mm. uh, and I've not managed to master smooth blending in, in acrylic and I know people can do it because I've seen it yeah me too I, I've never been able to do it and I'm like why what's wrong yeah. with me that I'm yeah. just not quick enough to do it yeah and I know there's there's lots of techniques with it but I, I think I just mm. don't like I don't like working in it it doesn't feel uh, it doesn't um, feel natural to me whereas watercolour I really like the sort of endless building up layers and noodling with details you know in the end I get completely lost with details that I, I shouldn't you know like over go over and over things again and again and again um, but yeah I really watercolour I like because of the softness of it um, and oils I can't wait to get stuck back into those because yeah it's uh, it's more I don't know it's, it's a bit more vibrant and I mean obviously you can make watercolours vibrant but um, I think I can be a bit freer with with oils because it, I can undo it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. You can just, I can just rub it off, start again. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they take a very long time to dry, don't they, oils? I don't have a lot of experience with them, but they can do. Yeah, I mean, but, but if you if you work very thickly in pasto style, then yeah, mm. um, or palette knife. But I I I usually use quite a lot of um, thinner. I've got this stuff called Zest It, which is um, instead of turpentine, it's made out of citrus oils. Oh, um, nice. It smells very strong. It's sort of nice, but it's also kind of too strong to, you wouldn't want to be sitting in a room which stank of that all the time. Um, so I'm going to have to find another medium. But um, when I use that, I'd, I'd use it very, very thinly. So actually it would only take two or three days in a warm room to dry. Whereas if I was, you know, going old school with lots of really, really thick paint, that yeah, it can take six months, I think, or longer. Yeah. Drop. So uh, yeah, not very practical. <laughs> Especially if you've got a deadline and you've got to ship. You've got to ship it. Yeah. Putting yeah. wet paint in a container. Yeah. I mean, if if I was doing um, commissioned work with with traditional anyway, they most likely if it was for for a book cover or something, it wouldn't. They wouldn't be wanting the original. They're just wanting the image. So I would. It wouldn't matter if it wasn't dry. Yeah. Uh, as long as I could photograph it well and. And send it off. And the same with watercolors. Obviously, you could just you can um, scan it and uh, off it goes. Just mm. handy. Do you find a lot of your work comes from book cover work, or is it mainly uh, single pieces that you do for individuals or gallery pieces or books? Yeah, I've done a lot of cover work. I mean, the last yeah, the last since I went properly freelance, I think the majority of my work really has been cover stuff and stuff for card the card games as well. Um, I think because I'm not, um, uh, I don't lean towards um, narrative art, but I'm trying to teach myself to tell a story in a picture a bit more because I think, um, well, for me anyway, I really enjoy a, a painting which, which has a, a little story going on, even if it's a very simple thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that's missing in my art because I tend towards, oh, I want to draw a beautiful face or I want to draw a, a fantastic character or a monster or a dragon or, or something. And, I, and I, I tend to sort of obsess over the, the thing rather than what's going on in the rest of the picture. So um, I've started planning, planning future, future paintings. So I've basically got to plan more and not be like, oh, I just want to draw this thing. I've got to uh, be a bit more ordered in what, I'm, in what I'm painting and think about the story. Nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, are, are you taking any uh, education at the moment or have you done a formal education in art? Um, I did I did an um, art foundation course uh, when I was 18, 19 in uh, Somerset, which was, it actually made me decide not to go to university because they were, I mean, that was in 96, 97. Um, so that was they weren't really very keen on, on, on um, figurative art for some reason. Um, we did paint, uh, photography, printmaking, etching, um, fine art, I think there was a textiles bit as well. But so we got to try out all these different things. 
but with the fine art it was mostly about um, you know sort of conceptual very very modern you know the installations and things like that which just never appealed to me still doesn't um, mm. and so they didn't really I didn't feel I was any support for what I wanted to do or I didn't really know I wasn't guided I didn't realize I should have been an illustrator because I didn't after the uh, after the foundation course I didn't go off and do art I, I went off and learned how to train horses so I, I kind of went completely the opposite direction um, and only found my way back to it um, in my late 20s um, but all that time that I was doing horse stuff I was doing pet portraits for people um, which I could have probably gone into and made a, a business out of that but I I get bored painting pets every day, so um, I, I'd like a bit more variety. So yeah, I haven't really technically had formal training, but I did go to um, Imaginism Studios workshop in 2012 in Canada, and they're doing they do they're still doing them now. A 30 it's a 30 day long workshop, and it's four artists and the the, the teacher Terry Lafontaine, mm. um, and Bobby Chu comes in and does lectures as well if he's around and they get other famous artists to come in and uh, um, help the students so it's completely intensive amazing sort of one-on-one -on -one almost uh, situation where you're living and working with with the teacher for, for a month and it was absolutely amazing so that you know that is that was formal training of a sort um, but it actually helped me even I didn't follow the direction that that, that it was more to do with them um, uh, like creature design and to pointing towards sort of um, it was very ba lots of basic stuff to try and get you your basics really well really strong with things like um, how to how to compose a picture properly how to um, approach drawing from life all those kind of things and a lot of people that went to on on the course they wanted to do either animation or um, concept, you know, creature design, all this, and character design, whereas I've kind of gone away from that or found that I, that's not what I wanted to do. I used to think I wanted to work in movies, um, but I realised, having had a little taster of doing that, working for a movie company very briefly, hmm. I realised it wasn't something that I wanted to do. It was really interesting to do, but I was like, oh, no, this isn't, this isn't my thing. So um, I have had little snippets of, of training, that one in Canada, but I've done online as well. The New Masters Academy is amazing. Um, I want to do Smarter Art School, which yeah. uh, looks absolutely incredible, but I've got to save up for that because it's very expensive. Yeah. But it's worth any, as far as I've heard. Yeah. Um, I'd love to do like IMC, but I think it's probably, I mean, the, the, the amount of money it costs to, to just to get to the States, I'm probably not going to be doing that. Um, yeah. But I could, you know, the Smarter Art School is sort of like that, but but online. Online, yeah. Uh, and uh, there was one other I was trying to think of. One fantastic weekend I'd love to do. That's but... it, yes. Because they're about to do theirs, aren't they? Yeah. I'd love to do that as well. Yeah. There's yeah, loads. In the States. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll have to do one here. Maybe I should organise one. Try and try and sort out some sort of... Uh... I did think about it a few... A couple of years ago I was talking to... Um, some artists about it and we should do it here but it's the organization which is really tricky yeah, yeah. Um, you got to get everyone on the right, on the right get the right week, week free and yeah and yeah yeah it's something it's something that, that would i think it would do well here yeah maybe kickstart it yeah got to kind of uh yeah find extra hours in the day or something <laughs> yes <laughs> extra months in the year yes yeah you need to basically not sleep. Yes, no sleep. No, no sleep. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the one thing that you learned from your time um, at uh, in Canada that you that you really took away that you were like, God, oh, I've never no, never thought about that before, but it's like the most amazing piece of advice I've ever heard in my life. Um, there wasn't any one piece of advice, but it was more. Uh, well, actually, Terry was always saying, you know, always when you're drawing. Um, he could see if you were draw. He told us to draw a square to start with. We were drawing cubes for the first week, and we all, you know, became sick of drawing cubes. But it was to try and understand, to, to compare everything, every line you're drawing. Mm. He said to compare it to the other side of the cube 
Um, so if, if you draw a cube, he knows if you were thinking about a cube when you were drawing it or if you weren't. And it sounds daft, but um, for me, like if, if I see someone who's drawn a horse, I can see if they know or understand the horse anatomy and things when they're drawing it. You know, it's immediately obvious to me. So it makes sense to me that Terry would say, you know, no, you haven't been thinking of a, a cube when you were drawing that cube. You weren't in the cube um, enough. So that, that bit of advice was really good where, where you know, you can always tell if someone doesn't know what they're drawing. It's kind of like you can usually tell if someone doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, sometimes some people are really good at blagging. But um, I think uh, knowing what you're drawing rather than trying to make it up. Is that somewhere when I was at school, my teacher always said, you must draw from life, you must draw from life. Um, and I didn't like, I wanted to just draw dragons all the time. I didn't want to draw from life. Um, I found it boring, but mm. I now understand why she was sort of saying, you know, even if you're doing fantasy stuff, you want to draw from life. There's always going to be things around you um, that inspire, that, that, that inform that creature. So, mm. yeah, that I would say um, knowing what you're drawing or understanding what you're drawing is going to make your, your art a lot better. Really. Yeah, yeah, it's, very much so, yeah. And do what you love as well don't try oh, don't, and, what you love. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't try and i think that's where i've with the with i've, I've discovered uh, with the patreon thing i'm doing what i love I'm, but I, it's not that i haven't been doing what i love it's that i've been doing it in the wrong medium perhaps mm. um so i'm i've i've discovered since properly you know concentrating okay what I, what do i really really want to draw it's it, it obviously re resonates with everybody else. And, and the fact that I'm really enjoying actually the process of it as well. Um, yeah, so those bits of advice. Do what you love. It sounds so um, impossible, you know, I can't just draw. Yeah, I mean, th there are some artists who do the same, pretty much the same thing on a different uh, take every time, but they're incredibly successful because that's what people, what they love to draw. And so that comes through the picture, you know, as, as long as they're not, slapping you know oh god I'll just draw loads of these because people like them as long as they're drawing them because they really love it people mm. like jasmine beckett uh is it jasmine beckett griffiths yes she draws a lot of um i call bobblehead ladies where they kind of yeah, really yeah, big yeah. i saw her movies. interview the other day yeah and people i mean it's it's incredibly popular and it's the same there's, there's a lot of artists who have i mean of course that's why people people don't buy your art because of the drawing itself often it's they're, they're buying the, the per you know the personality of the person almost and um the subject matter rather than necessarily what you know what how you've drawn it it's sometimes just the subject matter yeah yeah like well, unicorns unicorns are popular so i should draw them all the time but i would also get i i, I get bored too easily so i'd have to change it up we'd have to uh, do like a month of unicorns yeah maybe I've just got to avoid uh, rainbows and mountains and, and waterfalls, and then I'll be all right. Yeah, I'll just put them all in, but make them terribly dark and uh, gothic, gothic yeah. rainbows. I'm, won I'm wondering, there must be a way of making them dark and, dark and gothic, but there's something about a horse with a horn on it that is immediately cheesy. So you kind of have to sort of embrace the cheese. Maybe three horns, like a triceratops. Ah, yeah. And different shaped horns. I've been then trying. It would be a unicorn. It'd be a trihorn. Would be a trihorn. <laughs> horn beasts. Ah, oh, maybe that. Oh, that could be a book. Horned beasts and where to find them. Ah, oh, write that down. I've got too. I've got so much. So many lists of things I want to do. It's terrible. Yeah, it's like lots of people are like, oh, I've got artist's block, and it's like I've got the complete opposite of artist's block. I've got so many things that I want to draw. But I have no idea which one I should do first. Yeah, you need to. It's the, the, the focusing is 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 a um, a craft to be learned in itself. Yeah, I, f I find it very terribly hard that if someone says, "Oh, I want you to draw me uh, a, a dragon," I I would be like, "Oh, but what kind of dragon? Where does this dragon come from? And is it a water dragon, or is it a fire dragon, or is it an air dragon? And it's like what part of the world?" And I get so lost in the concept of. But that's it. a really good way of thinking. You know, I mean, that would be actually what um, Terry or Bobby Chu would say, you know, don't just, you know, stick a bunch of bits of, of animals together. Make, you know, think about, is it a carnivore? 
what does it eat how does it hunt what you know where does it like you just said where does it yeah. live it's but it makes a more interesting uh, creature yeah but then i then i ask all these questions to the client and they're like i just want a dragon <laughs> just give me a regular dragon that's a dragon yeah. oh. <laughs> so it's, it's difficult if there's not a specific specific thing but then sometimes you know if, if they just want a dragon then maybe you could just do a water dragon or a, a fire dragon or a... yeah yeah i mean i think that's the hardest part of working for yourself is doing all of the admin and all of the client facing work as well as all the creative work yeah it is it's, it is difficult it'd be nice to have a sort of um a secretary yes. that dealt with all that stuff it'd be brilliant Maybe we could start a um, start a business like artistspas.com and wow. it'd be like one artist could uh, like group of artists could pay one PA to do all of this. That would be amazing, and one PA could probably juggle a few artists. Maybe might get a bit messy though. But then maybe that's just what an agent is. Probably. Yeah. Probably. I mean, kind of. Um, there's sort of pros and cons to having an agent as well. So. Mm. Yeah. The PA would just organise your schedule and make bookings for you and stuff, whereas an, an agent sort of goes out and tries to promote you, don't they? That's true. Yeah, it is different. Mm. Mm. I mean, agents.com and PAs.com. Yeah. <laughs> Endless website ideas. <laughs> if them. anyone wants to run with these, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just pay to use them, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I was going to say, what's the worst thing about working for yourself that you found? Um, probably motivation, but I, that's not such a problem now because it's well, motivation isn't isn't the problem. It's discipline. Um, mm. I think uh, um, motivation m will come and go, um, and and sometimes you know, like some days you think, oh my god, I could just draw all the you know, you, you sit down, and you don't want to stop drawing, um, and other days you're. you're really struggling to think of something. I mean, particularly if you're, if you're doing personal work, I think it's different. Um, for me, for client work, um, I find easier because I'm, I'm not having to think about, um, it, it's their idea, so I'm not, I, can't, I can't noodle with it uh, endlessly. Mm. I have to work around their framework. So in a, in a sense, that gives me um, a freedom that my own sort of endless imagination can couldn't cause problems with um so yeah yeah constraints are good actually yeah and, uh, yeah sterling hundley i did a, a course online with sterling hundley which was amazing an ideation course and he says you know even on on your own projects you want to give yourself constraints otherwise you're just like you said you know oh i've got so many things which one am i going to do um so i've uh, having patreon has really helped me Sort of constrain myself so i've given my rather than saying emily draws things i've just I've put beasts fables and heroes because they're kind of my favorite subjects so as long as i'm within that the fantasy realm um within those things i think you know it, it, it gave me a bit of constraint um so i've got to you know not do animal portraits or random things that don't have anything to do with it um so i it, it really helped having that and also having the accountability um, and knowing these people are supporting me uh, is amazing. It's just been so amazing doing Patreon and I've been completely overwhelmed. I love it. Um, and unfortunately, the last couple of weeks, we've just bought a house and so there's been lots of up and down things. So I've not been posting as much, but generally I post at least once a day on Patreon. Once a day? Um, yeah, usually, at least. <laughs> Um, do you do like a sketch of the day or do you do uh, like th do you take a few photos of different things that you're working on at the beginning and then post them throughout the week yeah so if, if in a day if I'm working on a painting I'll basically post the progress of the painting each each time I stop for a break I'll post that to patreon or um, very rarely I'll post um, work digital work that I'm working on because I'm trying to keep patreon as my own the traditional stuff that's mm. Um, my journey back to to the traditional but um, all sorts of things I also post uh, my favorite artists my favorite paintings and why you know it's very very kind of simple stuff but it's only one dollar to follow me I've not got I've got tears on my patreon but the everybody gets to see everything at one dollar um, so if you pay more all you're paying for is um, a discount in my shop or pr free print 
or well it's not free print but it is a essentially ish free print print or then at higher tiers you're then paying for a, a commission or something so i didn't want i wanted my patreon to be as accessible to everyone as possible because then the more people that are paying one dollar um then they're going to benefit you know, the more, they're going to benefit people in the future who come yeah. along and pay one dollar they're going to have all the stuff that everybody's seen rather than oh if you want to see my tutorials then you're going to have to pay five dollars a month or something so i want a little bit like a sort of a national health service but for art um national art service it worked per <laughs> perfectly um so yeah i want eventually once i've when, it, when i've got more patrons i'm going to be able to spend time and do you know very specific things for patreon uh, for patreon um like like a, a detailed tutorial um videos all that kind of thing mm. which at the moment i do do sometimes little snippets of those things but not i don't get time to spend um get to spend that much time on them. so uh, yeah i'm excited about where it's going i think i think it's it's good it's is that one dollar a month then for the for the yeah. backers or is that one time one dollar every time you post one dollar a month so mm. yeah i mean you know it's not even the pound <laughs> was it 73p i don't know what it is at the moment yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not a lot, and it, you know, most people because I, I support some other patrons as well, mm. um, and or pa oh, patrons, patrons, something. Um, and I, I, I want to support as many people as possible, but obviously, and, and some of us swap uh, pledges as well. So um, some of my friends who I'm supporting, they're also supporting me the same amount, so it cancels it out. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I want to be able to see as much as possible for one dollar, mm. but um, I realise that that's you know, obviously that's the way I've decided to do it. But I'm also mm. doing um, free art. You know, I'm giving away original art every time we reach ten more patrons, um, and then once I reach a hundred patrons, um, I'm going to do just a giveaway, a free art giveaway every month. So um, there's lots of benefits to a dollar a month. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Because I I wanted to start Patreon, but I'm not sure how I would how I'd make it work. Because I always feel bad that I can't back artists for more. Because I'm thinking, you know, one dollar, I'm being a bit skingy. But then if I back thirty people, that's thirty dollars. Yeah, that's a lot. And, yeah, and if I back, you know, and I always see new artists, I'm like, oh, I want to back them as well. Yeah, it's very frustrating because it's it's the same for me. You know, there are lots of artists I'm just following on there, but I don't really get to see. You know, every now and then they'll make a public post, but um, yeah, it's it's got a budget budgeted in to yeah. your um, the Patreon thing. But I think I think Patreon's brilliant. I think it, it, for me because I've not got a huge following um, as as a, as an artist anyway. I'm not sort of haven't got thousands of followers um, who are, who know who I am. So I think for people who you know are incredibly successful artists on Patreon, like Sakini Chan, she had. Um, a massive, I think, three hundred thousand followers on Facebook and on Deviant Art. So mm. all those people will have followed her to Patreon, and even if half of them just paid her you one dollar a month, that would be it's, it's great. But she's she's um, absolutely sort of doing amazingly well. So I think if you've already got a massive following, it's it's you know almost uh, be stupid not to do a Patreon. <laughs> Yeah. But for me, I'm having to sort of build my following at the same time, so I'm very busy on Instagram and mm. things like that. So yeah, it's just social media juggling. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Do you find that you get more followers uh, if you post to Instagram or Facebook? I mean, which platform works best for you? For me, I think it's it's Facebook. So I I use my I still have a an art page on Facebook, but I don't I I use um, another app to post to my Facebook page so my main art page is actually my my personal page um, but what I do is keep all my my friends posts they stay as friends posts and then when I'm posting art I just make it public so people can follow my my uh, profile even though most of my stuff will be private all my art stuff will, will be public so mm. it's been much better for people the algorithms um, don't work very well on the page it's, it's, it's quite tricky to to get people to see things. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think that with the professional pages, like if you have a business page or, a, or, or an artist page or something, it's very difficult to get people to see your stuff unless you pay Facebook yeah. these days, isn't it? Yeah, 
it is. It's a shame, but I mean, I understand why they're doing it. They, they want to make money. And that's yeah. Terrible. But but yeah, it's get, getting around that is is um, tricky. But using your personal profile is is a good way of doing it because then I think you, you tend to land on more people's um, feeds that way. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Facebook's been really good for me, but Instagram as well. And and um, one of my tips for anyone wanting to do a Patreon would be to point your so on you know on Facebook you can put your URL of your mm. website. So instead of putting my website on there, I actually just put my Patreon on there and say, hey, you can support me on there. And the same on Instagram and the same on Twitter, rather than pointing people to my portfolio, because I'd rather people go to Patreon first, because that to, that's more what I'm about. It is that's my sort of uh, my true artistic calling. Yeah. You know. So it's it's that that's what I want to present as, as what I do rather yeah. than my portfolio, which is in flux at the moment. So bought me for less than the price of a plastic bag. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's um, I think yeah, social media is really important as as an artist now. It's very 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 boring to do, but it's essential. But it yeah. does make you kind of, you know, constantly, you know, mm. so sit, you know, having to think about what have I got to post. And remember that I've got to post, like, stop mid-drawing, you know, I better stop and, and take a picture of it. And, you yeah. know, rather than, oh, God, I've been working on it for three hours and nobody's seen what's happened in the middle, you know. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's difficult to try and uh, to do it uh, efficiently, but... It's, uh, I think yeah. social media is, the, is the, I think Facebook and Instagram for me are, are my favourites. Twitter gets posted on via Instagram, so um, you, using IFTT, hmm. if this then that, for those that don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a great service. I recommend it if you have more than one multi, uh, like social media thing and yeah. you want the same content to like spread across everything you have. Yeah. It's and perfect. hashtags. It's all in the hashtags. And I didn't use hashtags for the longest time. I was like, why are people hashtagging stuff? And I was like, oh, so that people can find things. Yeah. Like uh, on Instagram, the, the hashtag painting, mm. millions and millions of, you know, posts under that. And work in progress as well. WIP. Yes. People love those. Yeah. So it's, it, it's um, if you've, if, and there's, there's, there's websites that you can look up, you know, what are the best Instagram hashtags, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I so, didn't know that. Yes, just just Google best best Instagram hashtags for artists. There's like, ah, like hundred okay. of them. I mean, it's ridiculous. Just sh you know, just change them each time. Like, yeah, you don't want a hundred on every post. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no. I I don't. I only do about five usually, five or six. Mm. Um, just because I can't, you know. Also, because you have to do it all on your phone. Yeah. So, you know, I can't just rattle it all out on on the computer. Um. So yeah. Well, I think uh, I think that's about time. I think we've been chatting for about half an hour, over half an hour now, haven't we? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can gas about art for. Me too. I can just keep you here all day, just talking about how you make Patreon work and and stuff like that. But I won't. I'll let you get on with your day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just keep just keep posting. That that would be my tip. <laughs> yeah, just well, keep keep doing it. Keep post. Keep yeah. drawing. Keep posting. Yeah, just draw lots of stuff. Draw what you love. Yeah, one of that's one of the best things I have heard was um, I think it was like actually Pete Morebocker. He said um, if you're only drawing four things a month, he said then it's not going to be very good because each time you're having to like wind up to it. He's like you have to be drawing four things in a morning and 10 things a day, like, even if it's just tiny sketches. Yeah, it definitely, uh, I've noticed a difference when I, when I try and make myself do a, a drawing in the morning before I do anything else. I definitely feel better about everything else I draw that day, um, even if I have to. So if I'm having to do digital, um, like at the moment, the, the card game I'm working on is all digital. Um, I usually start the day with a, traditional drawing just so that I know that I've done done something traditionally so I feel a bit and, and plus it gives me something to post um, if if I like it otherwise I put, put it in the bin <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's another thing isn't it that everyone's posts to Instagram are just their best sketches all the crap, crap sketches kind of just go in a drawer <laughs> if it's yeah, yeah. Get seen. or get drawn on the other side or mm. yeah 
As for the ske sketchbook, is I used to never want to draw crappy stuff in my sketchbook. Um, and I used to be really bad at filling a sketchbook, but now I've got a rule because I used to have a problem with buying sketchbooks. I love new sketchbooks. It's, it's like, oh, this one's leather, or this one's got pockets, or... Oh, this one's shiny and has a clasp thingy. Yeah, it's terrible. Mm, yeah. So now I'm not allowed to buy any more sketchbooks until I've finished the ones I've got. Mm. And I've got, I've got a few to fill. But I'm getting there. So. I always try to buy the cheapest, nastiest sketch paper I can, like the cheapest, nastiest, like from Ryman's or something. Yeah. And I, then I don't feel bad about drawing badly in it because I'm like, oh, it's just cheap. It's one pound fifty anyway. Yeah, it's a because if you get one of those lovely hardback uh, paper chase ones. Is it oh yeah, oh, oh. one of the one of the ones from like uh, is it? the kind of the embossed ones. The yeah, stuff, they've got a little clasp on them. I've got one down here somewhere. Yeah. Paper, mate. Oh, paper. Yeah, paper something. something. Paper yeah. Something. And they're all so beautiful. And you're like, oh, I can't ruin a page because you yeah. can't tear pages out and feel yeah. good about it. Yeah. <laughs> the, an, another tip for uh, starting a sketchbook from the fear of starting a sketchbook is to start in the middle. Because then you don't, mm -hmm. you know, you don't start the page going, oh, my God, I want to do the best sketch ever on the front page. And then if you do it in the middle, nobody will find it anyway. Well, they might, but... And then they just uh, go right past it. Good stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Top tips. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for interviewing me. Oh, well, thank you very much for, for coming on and, and just geeking about art with me for a uh, really long time now. <laughs> about an hour. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'll let you get on with the day. Thank you. Oh, it's been lovely. And people can find you at uh, emilyhair.co.uk and at patreon.com slash art by Emily Hair. That is correct. And uh, I'll put a link to, if you uh, email me a link to the gallery show, uh, the, yes. not the gallery show, but the show that you're yeah, uh, yeah, doing with sure. those other artists, I'll put that in the link below as well so people can find you. Brilliant. I will actually try my best to actually pop down and see you as well. That would be good. See if I can pop in and look at all the beautiful go. things. Pardon? A long way for you to go. Oh, I'm in London, so uh, okay. I could just catch the train. Oh, okay. Yeah, wouldn't be too bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 <laughs>